and now for the special address ladies and gentlemen kindly help me to welcome on dais mr golak kumar simli principal advisor and cto of passport seva program ministry of external affairs government of india thank you sir for taking your time from your schedule means a lot a round of applause for everyone for sir very good morning to all of you let me at the outset thanks ilog media mr faim akta and their entire team for having me here uh, i must not forget the organizer i think playing a big role in this event and also colleague on uh, my colleague on the dais i think today uh, we are discussing about how do we make public sectors a global powerhouse right and uh, since coming from the government side of it i'll put some of the examples some of the huge cases probably where we need to focus strategically where we need to expedite enhance uh, improve so that you know uh, when you talk about a global powerhouse i look into typically four direction the first direction is how do you create a market competitiveness all these public sectors we have how do we create that market competitiveness when i say it is not only in india but globally too internationally too the second direction is the efficiency today whatever we do whatever we are delivering in the name of product services citizen services uh, for the greater good for the larger public good at large how do we increase the as is efficiency right that is the second factor i look into when we are talking about making public sector positioning into the global powerhouse competing with the global market the third is very important the innovation i think now we need to change a direction the traditional way of doing the thing has taken the back seat we need to innovate we need to develop a culture of innovation we need to develop a you know organizational change uh, organizational i say alignment realignment whatever you say so the innovation factor is not one direction there are many facets of innovations right from your the product and services you are dealing along with that what are the dependencies when i say dependencies be it a business model be it a, be it a kind of a r&d kind of a requirement be it a collaboration requirement so all those facets need to be uh, look around when we talk about innovation and then lastly which we are here today the global presence right how do you uh, compete how do you compete globally when i say compete globally in terms of developing those global standards in terms of making those product and portfolios compete with the global best practices available with us and also which we must not forget when we deal with such global norms practices best standards best use cases we must not forget about those compliances and regulations very important right uh, anything and everything goes wrong where do you land up you land up with those compliances and regulations and the court of law right now having said that when we uh, say that these three four direction we need to focus on when we are positioning our public sectors government at large to a global powerhouse kind of a position uh, some of the strategic initiative which i have noted is and which we are doing probably which we are doing whatever the large transformation we are uh, imbibing we are delivering we are making it a reality be it a passport seva be it a aadhar as a example be it a upi as a example i can quote palathra of these examples uh, but how has these has become not only uh, in terms of a scale if you ask me we are dealing with let's say more than 1.4 billion of people now having said that also we are dealing with so many variations when i say variations variations in terms of demography variations in terms of geography variations in terms of rural and urban divide variation in terms of linguistic and other barriers and variations also in terms of let's say economic conditions right and that's how uh, whatever we are doing in india as of now and why is that these examples are 
becoming uh, which I say greater good or larger public good, not only for the nation but globally too, because of this reason. Because when we do something, we must not differentiate, right? We take care of each of these variations and then we deliver at a larger scale, mass scale, which, which you are citing an example globally, right? And to do that, the first and foremost requirement is the strategic vision and leadership we need to develop within the public sectors. I'm not saying that it is not there, probably we need to enhance and improve. Now when I say strategic vision and leadership, two, three things I, I must put forward. The first and foremost thing is, how do you give a board of the public sector a kind of a free kind of environment to perform, right? Can we have the support of those board when you are dealing with some product or services or any kind of a delivery within the public sector? That is the first and foremost requirement. Then once the board has that freedom, the second is the senior management role within uh, that public sector, whatever role they are playing. And then the third tier is the government officials who are there to perform in the field, right? So when we are developing this organizational structure, I think based on today's requirement, the kind of technology changes, the kind of automation happening, the kind of competition happening among the product and services we are dealing, I think we, we uh, need to change the way we are dealing today, the way we are dealing the thing traditionally and do it differently. Right? And for that to happen, as you know, the three factors are very important. And believe me, this we have practiced when we are transforming these kind of a large uh, transformation AI name, whether it is passport, whether GST, whether it is gem, whatever it is. No? So this is the first and uh, prime factor. The second factor is you know, uh, we need to invest more and more on innovation and R&D. I think unless we have a practice of developing that culture within the public sector, how do you create more and more innovation? How do you kind of a invest on R&D to develop, uh, let's say, cutting edge technologies, the uh, product and services I'm looking for, the kind of global standard I'm looking for? And at the end, what is that we are looking when you're trying to compete globally? I'm trying to compete with a global market, right? So do I have that synergy? Do I have that kind of a power of competing with the global scenario, right? So if not, then I have to strengthen my potential of innovation, R&D, and other requirement. The third bullet is the, in the strategic direction, what I find we need to work on is strategic partnership collaboration and developing business models. Now when I say strategic partnership, collaboration, I think one of the area which we are realizing is within India it is happening. For an example, the passport seva itself, we have developed a business model where I am working hand on hand with a uh, private industry. However, when it comes to sovereignty, sensitivity, of the data, information, processes, it is within the government. But when it comes to non-sovereign function, creation of infrastructure, facilities, amenities, business model in terms of investment, the private partner is bringing in. And the beauty of this is, you, know, you create a sense of you no know, kind of a resilience, you create a sense of service delivery mechanism, which is long-term, which is sustainable, and you also see that you, know, you are continuously improving. And these partnerships, since now we have already developed within India, can we have such partnership with global best practice companies, right? Technology vendors, no? And all of these kind of a large uh, conglomerate, whether it is, you no, know, I'm talking about IT sector, automation sector, agriculture sector, health sector, Every sector there is a potential, but how do you bring in that a strategic partnership, collaboration and business model? And that is the role I was hinting towards the board or the senior management we need to play. The one more factor is you know, which we call talent development and skill development. 
I think uh, we are realizing now saying that the way we are you know, trying to compete with a global market, the way uh, India is positioning as a hub of innovation, R&D, uh, citing example for global good. Uh, our talent, our skills also need enhancement, right? Alignment, realignment. And if you need to do that, the best way of doing is imbibe it as part of the business model which you are developing. The problem we land up is the uh, silo way of approaching the talent development or skill development. It must not be. It must be part of your business model. It must be part of your RFP process, business requirement process, and it should be a continuous process. And that's what I have done uh, probably in the Passport Seva program. The last thing is, I must say two more points, the customer-centric approach. And when I say customer-centric approach, first and foremost thing comes is something I call corporate governance. Do please do develop uh, a practice of fair corporate governance. And when I say fair corporate governance, there are again many facets, right from a stakeholder positioning to your financial strength, to your kind of a ethics and moral, to your transparency and accountability, the risk management factor, so the first factor come to my mind when I talk about customer-centric approach is governance, governance issue. Today, the slogan is minimum government, maximum governments kind of a thing. But last and not the least is regulatory reforms and policy support. Here there are two parts. When I say regulatory reform and policy support, uh, government, what the best can do, what we can best can do is creating an environment of pro in terms of policy intervention, in terms of ease of doing business, in terms of taking industry into the forum, providing some sort of an environment of, let's say, incentive for startups, MSMEs, creating that value proposition. But from industry side, you need to work, we all need to work saying that, how do you create an environment of trust? How do you create an environment of developing new business model and then competing to the global market. And at the end of the day, what we are looking is how do you drive our economic growth, whether I'm talking about one trillion of digital economy, dollar five trillion of overall economy. The second best thing, what we all are looking is how do you create more and more or develop a foster of innovation and in R&D, and third is the prosperity of the nation in terms of the greater good and larger public good. So I think these are the points I wanted to highlight uh, among all of us when we are making or positioning our public sectors, uh, competing with the global market, making them a global powerhouse, and that is the way we need to cross it. So thank you. Thank you once again, uh, Mr. Fime and their entire team for having me here. Thank you.